Hi, welcome everybody to the Vivid Racing UTV channel where we talk about UTVs and stuff. Generally in the automotive world, people make fun of CVT transmissions for being slow and boring and just used in economical cars and not a real performance car and so on. But in the UTV world, it's actually the preferred type of transmission. With a CVT system comes a belt and a full clutching system. And this is where a lot of people get confused on how they should modify it, how they should upgrade their UTV why their belts keep exploding on the trail, and a whole lot more. So today we're going to clear a lot of that up by explaining everything you need to know about UTV clutching systems. The basic idea behind a continuously variable transmission is to continuously change when the engine and transmission are engaged and the effect of final drive ratio. Now this is done with two clutches, a primary clutch and a secondary clutch, as well as the drive belt which connects the whole system together. The CVT design is great for UTVs and really anything for that matter because it allows the driver to just simply just stick the thing and go and it just works. There's nothing to worry about. And off-road it's actually really awesome because it allows your UTV to maintain in its optimal power range. Your engine makes power most efficiently in specific RPM ranges. So if you can maintain within those ranges, you're going to be able to accelerate a whole lot faster. The issue is that there are some inherent flaws with the CVT style transmission. Now how this system works is with two clutches known as the primary clutch and the secondary clutch. The primary clutch is typically attached to the engine crankshaft and it has two sheave faces. One of the faces is fixed to the rotation of the crank and the other sheave can move in and out to engage the belt. In most CVT transmissions, the CVT faces are fully separated at idle and the belt will ride on the post or shaft. Since the belt is not engaged by the sheaves, it allows the engine to idle without sending power to the wheels. Now the sheave movement on the primary clutch is determined by a set of weights which respond to centrifugal force. So as your engine spins up, it starts to spin up that primary clutch. And as that spins up, it's spreading those weights and it ends up pushing the sheave faces either in or out, depending on if you're accelerating or decelerating your engine speed. Once the belt is engaged, it starts to then send power to the secondary clutch. The secondary clutch works a lot like the primary clutch in the sense that it has two sheave faces, one of which is stationary and one of which is movable. But instead of being attached to the engine crankshaft, this one is attached to the transmission. And it's opposite from the primary clutch, where the primary clutch is fully spread out as possible at idle so that the belt is riding on the post and not the sheaves. The secondary clutch is actually the opposite, where it's as pinched together as possible at idle. And the belt is riding on the largest part of the sheave. The secondary clutch is held together by a compression spring and it also contains a torque sensing element known as a helix. At a low ratio, the compression spring holds the two faces of the secondary clutch together, but as engine speed picks up, the primary clutch begins to engage and it begins to pinch together. Now what that does is it sends power to the secondary clutch and it forces those sheaves to spread apart. This effectively shifts the CVT to a higher gear ratio. As throttle is decreased and RPMs begin to decrease, the primary clutch begins to spread apart and the secondary clutch begins to pinch together because of that compression spring. Now what this does is it shifts your UTV into a lower gear ratio. The torque sensing element and the helix in the secondary clutch don't operate solely on what the primary clutch does. The secondary clutch is also sensitive to vehicle load and can open or close sheaves based on load put on the transmission. The changes in the primary and secondary clutch happen automatically depending on load, speed, and engine power output. Now the big inherent flaw with the CVT type of transmission is the fact that it is specifically set up for a certain amount of engine power and a certain amount of engine load. And those two things are both changed once you introduce aftermarket parts to your UTV, such as larger tires, or like a big turbo, or injectors, or an exhaust, or anything that's going to increase power. This is where aftermarket clutching comes into play. Now, for example, with an OEM clutch in the mud bogs, the clutch could end up burning up because it's not geared correctly and it's not engaging correctly for that type of situation. And likewise, the opposite is true. For example, if you are at these sand dunes, you need your RPMs really, really high to maintain absolute peak power and really high RPM as you're going up those sandy hills. Now, in both of these situations, increased tire size for increased load or increased power are really going to mess this up. And really the stock clutch is designed to do a little bit of everything. So it's designed to work in just about every situation in stock form, but it doesn't do anything particularly well. It just does everything kind of okay. Now with aftermarket clutching, it comes in a few different forms. You can either go with the flyweights in the primary clutch, a compression spring, a primary clutch, 
a secondary clutch or a primary and secondary together. For those of you who enjoy saving money and aren't afraid to tear into your UTV, different springs and weights is a really good way to go because it is the most cost effective solution. But the downside is that you're going to have to take your clutch off and test the whole system multiple times in order to get it dialed in correctly for your specific tire size and power output and UTV. Now again, this is fine if you're willing to take your clutch apart multiple times, but if you're not willing to do that, there are some simpler options. For those of you who want something simpler, we'd recommend going with a company such as STM Powersport or somebody similar. Now with a company like this, you would end up sending us all the modifications that you have for your UTV. So you'd write them all down in an email, send them over to us, and then we deal with STM Power Sports and they're going to build you a clutch system specifically for your setup, which means you would basically just be able to bolt it onto your UTV and go. You wouldn't have to worry about tuning at all because it's all done for you before installation. Some of our popular UTV clutching comes from Super ATV, Sparks Racing, STM, Bikeman Performance, Speedworks, Trinity Racing, and many others. All right, hopefully this explained how CVT transmissions work in UTVs. If you guys like the video, please give it a thumbs up, get subscribed. This is a new channel and we really want to grow this and help out the UTV community as much as we can. Be sure to also head over to the website, pick up a shirt. We also have masks and stickers and all sorts of other cool stuff that you want to grab. If you have any questions, please send us an email, utv at vividracing.com. We're happy to answer any questions you have or hook you up with any parts that you need now or in the future. As always, this has been Bryce with Vivid Racing and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.